Hey, welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for taking time to watch another video. In this walkthrough, we're going to go through how to implement Azure functions. So we're going to create an Azure function and then we are going to create an HTTP triggered event function and test it. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So to create a function app, all you have to do is either search for function app in the search box or you can go to the all services menu and then you can find the function app over there as well. So we've been using all services for quite a long. So let's search for this function app in the search box. Select the function app. As you can see that I don't have any function app at the moment. You can simply tap on add to create a new function app. And basically the information what we have to give is where you have to keep your function app, uh, what subscription, what resource group, the name for the instance of the function app you're going to create. So make sure you provide a unique name. Most of the names are taken. So you need to provide a unique name to get your first function app get going. And then you have a couple of uh, options either to publish as a code or a Docker container. Uh, then uh, make sure you select a runtime stack as .NET Core. And uh, you can leave it at the default region or you can select a different region as well. Within the .NET Core, uh, you can select the version as well. So I'm not going to go through other details, details like hosting, monitoring, tags, etc. because we will go through those topic as a separate one in the future walkthroughs. So for this examination, all we have to know is what is function app and how to create a function app. And once you create the function app, how these functions looks like. Let's go ahead and create this function app. So the first process is the validation process. The ARM template is going to validate all the information what you provided is sufficient for creating a function app. After that, this will go ahead and start the deployment process. So right now, if you go into the notification tab, it is initializing the deployment. It would take uh, probably like good 30 to 40 seconds to create the function app. So I'm going to fast forward the video and I will see you when we complete the deployment. So it looks like our deployment is completed. I can see that all the things what is required for the function is been created. Now we are inside our function app. So on the left hand side, you can see things like overview where you can see the details about the function app, the metric of the function app, how it has been performing, how to connect to your function app, etc. Um, and under functions, there are four things you need to be aware of functions, app keys, app files and proxies. Uh, we're not going to go in detail about that in this particular demo. So let's go back to the function app to see if we can see the status is running. As you can see that the function has been created and the status is running. So once we go inside the function app, this is where you can go and create an HTTP trigger. That is what we are going to use for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to go inside the function and uh, you can click on add a new function. This is how you create a new function. As you can see that there are different triggers, HTTP trigger, a timer trigger and so on and so forth. So select the HTTP trigger and uh, the authorization level as function and now hit on create. So the backend now it is created a HTTP, HTTP trigger function for us. Now let's review the code plus text blade. So this is an auto generated code and uh, note that the code is designed to run an HTTP request and log information. So also notice that you can find that this code returns a hello message with a name. So let me quickly highlight that part so that you can see it. I'm not sure is it going to be super easy for you to watch in the video. So whatever I'm highlighting is when you successfully run this trigger, this returns a hello message string and you can see that this is how you can access the url for the function 
Um, you can simply copy that and you can go to another browser and uh, you can run this to see how the message is going to return for you. So I copied the function value or the URL to access this trigger. Let's go to a new browser or open up another tab and we're going to paste the URL for the function. As you can see that now this is an HTTP triggered and uh, you can see that there is a message for us. So it is a function app, which is a running function app. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another value at the end of the trigger to see if that message is triggering as well. So now I added another name at the end of the trigger and I'm going to execute that. So now you can see that I get a message called hello, a guide to the cloud. So that's how you can test this function app. Again, this is not a full fledged example on how you would be using your function app, but at least it gave you an idea that how to create a function app and how to execute a function app, etc. At least one example of it. Um, another thing what you can do is you can go back to the function app and you can check the status of these triggers. It might take some time. So we have actually executed few triggers already. So let's see if we can see that. So I'm going to go back to the monitor tab and I'm going to hit refresh. It might take some time as you can see that I have executed this command few times for each trigger. The monitoring tab is tracking all these executions what we have made so far. Once again, congratulations, you have created an Azure Function app to display a hello message when there is an HTTP request. Now, as always, now I'm going to remove all these resources I have created to avoid additional cost. Now that we have learned about how to create a function app and how to create an HTTP triggered event, now let's go and find out what we are going to learn next. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about Azure DevOps and Azure App Services. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.